now. Sam Kinslow was is present for the father, Curtis Lewis Brown. Sam Martinez, uh, Mr. Phil Martinez is standing in for Phil Martinez. He is uh, representing the mother, Irene Salas. Ms. Salas is present. Ms. Salas, if you'll go ahead and unmute, uh, unmute yourself and start your video. Ms. Gungori, you may proceed. The Department calls Jennifer Ms. Perez. Perez, is it correct that you also prepared a family plan of service for both Ms. Salas and Mr. Brown? Yes. And are those family plans of service currently on file with the court? Yes, they are. Did the mother have an opportunity to review and or sign her family plan? Yes. Yes to both? Yes. Yes and yes. And did she indicate that she had any issues or concerns with her family plan? No, she didn't have any issues. Um, in fact, is it correct that the mother indicated that she would be going into some type of impatient um, either today or sometime this week? Yes, today at 11 a.m. And that's part of her family plan, is it not? Yes. One second. Let me, I'm going to put Mr. Peeling and Mr. Dennis back in the lobby for just half a second. We'll take up Peeling next. Sorry, Ms. Gondora. Uh, Ms. Perez, what about Mr. Brown? Have you been able to review his family plan of service with him? I have not. The courtesy worker is planning to go see him again either Thursday or Friday of this week. And he's currently incarcerated out of county. Is that correct? Yes. All right, so that's why you personally have not been able to go over with him. But you said that someone from the department in a different region is handling that. Is that right? Yes, that's correct. What efforts is the department making to ensure that he's going to have an opportunity to work services while he's incarcerated? I've reached out to the unit and they have a program called Cognitive Thinking. They require all the inmates to participate in that um, after the, I believe it was six weeks. Um, they're not as strict with that cognitive program, but they are still required to attend. Um, and I believe it's eight, 8 to 11 and then 1 to 4 or 5 p.m. Monday through Friday. Um, so um, that's something that they are required to take. Um, just They just learn about making better decisions in life. Um, and then they also have, um, through the chaplaincy program, they're able to do anger management, um, and I believe that's just once a month. So you have reached out to the facility to look at what services they offer that would line up with some of the um, services the department is hoping to have him complete. Is that right? Yes. Okay, so you're going to make sure and communicate with Mr. Brown that these services are available at his unit and the department expects him to work those as part of his family plan of service. Yes. Are there any concerns that have been brought to the department's attention regarding the family plans of service at this time? No. Is there anything that you feel the court needs to be made aware of that you haven't already? Um, a man by the name of William Moncrief did reach out to me um, and he said there's a chance that he could be Carmen's father. Um, he is wanting a paternity test. However, I did let him know that Mr. Uh, Brown has came forward um, waiving his right to a paternity test. Um, Ms. Uh, Salas does not believe that he could be the father, um, but she does believe another man by um, Mr. Flores could be the father. Um, Actually, this is all kind of crazy because Mr. Brown filed the judicial admission of paternity, but this child is only not even three months old. So I'm not sure if one guy coming forward and just saying, sign me up, should be in a position to keep other folks from coming forward if they believe they might be the father. And Ms. Perez, I believe you did let Mr. Moncrief know that he could show up at our next court hearing and request to be heard on that matter. Is that right? Yes, he may actually be in the lobby now. William Moncrief, he is. Yes, ma'am. I'll bring him in. Otherwise, Ms. Perez, is it correct that the department is asking for the family plans of service to be made in order of the court today? Yes. I'll pass the witness. Um, Mr. Moncrief, can you start your video, please, for me? And Ms. Perez, let me know that you believe you may be the father to this child. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. Are you are you wanting to submit yourself to the jurisdiction of the court and asking for genetic testing? Yes, ma'am. All right. Um, I am going to enter that order for genetic testing. Okay. Does Ms. Perez have all of your information, uh, your address, your date of birth, and all of the information that she needs that needs to go into the order? Yes, ma'am. Is that correct, Ms. Perez? All right. Yes. And, sir, um, for future reference, this, she, she has your address, and so she'll provide that to her lawyer. I am going to allow you to participate in these proceedings until 
uh, you are either found to be the father or ruled out as the father. All right. Okay. Thank you. Also, the department will probably want to visit with you and kind of do an assessment to see if there are services that they may want you, uh, that they may feel like you could benefit from if, you, if the child were to, is going to be placed with you if you're the father. Um, as a general rule, you don't have to work those services if you're the alleged father. But if you wait until the DNA comes back, you're kind of at a disadvantage to work the services and be the first one to the finish line, if you understand what I'm saying. Yes, ma'am. All right. So I'm entering the genetic testing order. What what um, town do you live in, sir? Amarillo. Amarillo? Yes, ma'am. All right. And so what will happen is Ms. Gungor is go going to prepare the order for the genetic testing. I will sign it. It'll get filed. Ms. Perez, can you get that DNA order directly to the Office of the Attorney General with their referral form so that they can get that set up for Mr. Moncrief? Yes, ma'am. All right. And so, Mr. Moncrief, if you do not receive a letter from the Office of the Attorney General within about two to three weeks telling you where to show up with your ID in order to be swabbed for the genetic test, please, please reach out to Ms. Perez so that we can make sure it doesn't fall through the cracks somewhere. OK. OK. All right. Um, I'm sorry. I think Ms. Gungora had passed Ms. Perez uh, with regard to the status. Mr. Kinslow, um, any questions for Ms. Perez? No questions, Your Honor. Mr. Martinez? Uh, just a very couple. Uh, Ms. Perez, uh, Phil Martinez, um, standing in for Sam Martinez. In regards to uh, Ms. Salas, you indicated that you've already gone over the uh, family plan with her, correct? Yes. And, and am I to understand that she will go into Blue Bonnet Trails here today? Is that what the recommendation is? She is. Yes, she vo she voluntarily um, wants to go to inpatient. Okay. All right. And, and do you know how long the inpatient is at this time? I do not. It, it depends on her and her progress and OK. And so the other parts of the family plans, they, th those won't start until the Blue Bonnet Trails inpatient is completed, right? Well, some rehab, service, rehab facilities offer um, therapeutic services, parenting classes. So once she gets admitted, we will definitely look into what services they are able to offer her so that she's able to take advantage um, and, you know, get credit for those in a sense. OK. OK. I appreciate it. Thank you. I'll pass the witness. Mr. Keithley. I don't have any questions at this time, Your Honor. All right. Any further witnesses, Ms. Gungora? Not at this time, Judge. Mr. Kinslow? I have no witness, no questions. I would point out that I did not get an opportunity to fully go over the plan by telephone with my client yet. And if he does have issues, I might ask for a reconsideration, but it's consistent with what we were expecting. All right. Thank you. Mr. Martinez? Same thing as Mr. Kinslow, Your Honor. Uh, uh, we we have no issues with the family plan, and 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 our hope is is that Ms. Salas gets into the uh, Blue Bonnet Trails and and takes advantage of the inpatient treatment and what other um, what other uh, parenting classes they may offer there to get her on the right road. Thank you, Mr. Keithley. I don't have any witnesses, Your Honor. All right, Ms. Salas, please keep your appointment today. Um, it's, it's you're off to a good start. Um, there's no time like right now to get started. Um, don't be like a lot of parents and tell us you're going to go and then something comes up. If you need a ride, okay. No, I already got my things packed, ready to go. <laughs> all right. Um, yes, all right. So I've got one question for my resident prior OAG person. There's an order that I have entered based on Mr. Brown's judicial admission. Normally, if there's a adjudicated father, the office of the attorney general would be not inclined to go forward with DNA testing. Will my order based on Mr. Brown's judicial admission be a problem for them or do I need to withdraw it right now? As, I mean, it's not in their computer system. It doesn't get sent to them. So unless it's on a birth record, they're not even going to know about it. Uh, that's kind of what I was thinking. I just hated to assume. <laughs> However, if you if you want to be safe, you can put that mistaken paternity language in it. And that would solve that issue just in case it's an issue. Ms. Gungora, do you have that magical language that says? I, be I believe so. I can. The, the language I have usually has a, a mistake of fact surrounding the acknowledgement of paternity. Okay. But I can change acknowledgement to establishment of paternity previously entered for it by another regarding another so i mean i just think due to the age of this child um it's not like mr moncrief has waited for years <laughs> um he didn't have a chance to assert any op opportunity so if you'll just make sure your order what i i'd like if you need to call the oag to see if they need some magical language so that we don't lose any time on getting the dna set up awesome all right anything further from anyone um, Ms. Gungora, if you will also, when you get that DNA test, go ahead and make sure that Mr. Moncrief is included as a service contact on the e-filing system. Sir, you weren't named as a party in the pleading, but you are an, a person who may be the father who has come to court and asked that your parentage be um, adjudicated one way or the other. 
And so you are entitled to participate in these proceedings. Sure. Um, and so from now on, when something gets filed, uh, if you have, if Ms. Perez has your email address, then you will also get a copy of anything that's filed in the cause so that you will be uh, abreast of what's going on. Okay. All right. All right. I will continue the department as a temporary managing conservator. I will approve the current placement and prior orders for visitation. The court will make the family service plan for Ms. Salas and Mr. Brown an order of the court. I am ordering genetic testing regarding the child and Mr. Moncrief. Ms. Salas, um, your progress on your family service plan will be reviewed by the court at every future hearing. The law requires that I let you know if you are unable or unwilling to provide a safe environment for your child, your parental rights could be subject to restriction or termination. The next hearing in this matter will be November, I'm sorry, will be December 19th, 2023. Second permanency and final will be April 16th, 2024. And our dismissal date is July 8th, 2024. Mr. Moncrief, if the genetic testing results indicate that you are, it's called you're not excluded, which means you're the father, then you will have the right to have a court appointed attorney if you cannot afford an attorney. If in, in the event that that occurs, I bet Ms. Perez can uh, either get you the request for a court appointed attorney, um, or you can contact my court coordinator to get you that request for a court appointed attorney. And once you are found to be the father, then I'll act on that as soon as I can. So that if you're the father, you will have a, a lawyer representing you. Okay. All right. Is there anything further from anyone? This case is set on the court's docket for a status hearing. The department is present through Ms. Gangora. Robin Houston is the attorney and guardian ad litem for the children. Mr. Matt McClinton is present for the mother, Cormisha Phillips. She is she incarcerated, Mr. McClinton, it looks like. Well, yes, that's my understanding. She's, she's okay. incarcerated. Thank you. Um, the adjudicated father of Audrey is Ben Peeling. He is present with Mr. Dennis. Mr. Dennis was conditionally appointed for Mr. Peeling. Um, Judge, is it correct that he's adjudicated? I'm sorry. Yes. My, okay. yes. And then we have an unknown father for Nolan. You may proceed. Thank you. The department calls Clotel Stewart. Ms. Stewart, did you prepare a family plan of service for the mother in this case? I did. Okay. Was she? Were you able to review the family plan of service with her? Yes. And did she sign her family plan of service? She did. Did she indicate that she had any issues or concerns with any of the services listed? No. Now, she is currently in the Clinton County Jail, is that correct? She is. Are there some services that she will be able to complete while she is incarcerated? Uh, yes. Uh, Dr. Schinder should be able to go out and do the psychological while she's there. As long as she's willing to accept those services from him, is that correct? Yes, ma'am. Um, is the department asking that that family plan of service for the mother be made in order of the court today? Yes, we are. Okay. Now, what were the developments regarding Mr. Peeling? So uh, we did locate Mr. Peeling just recently on the 16th, and I was able to assess him on the 25th. So we did, um, we had a family plan created without being able to speak with him. And we just wanted to do resource management, individual counseling, and of course the um, the random drug testing. But we would also like to add protective parenting to his family plan of service. So the family plan of service that is currently on file for Mr. Peeling really only had um, safe and stable home, random drug testing, and that individual therapy that you had discussed. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. And now after having spoke with Mr. Peeling and talked about um, talking about his relationship with the mother and his daughter, um, the department just wants to add protective parenting to his family plan at this time. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. Um, did you talk to him about his relationship with Audrey and why um, he hasn't had a, or played an active role in her life up to now? Yes, uh, Mr. Pilling did um, state that he was actually afraid of Miss uh, Phillips, and that's why he hadn't reached out to have any type of relationship with Audrey at this time. Did you identify any safety concerns with his home or any issues um, that needed to be addressed? No, ma'am. Okay. And so we are asking that the family plan of service for him be made in order of the court with the addition of protective parenting. Is that correct? That's correct. It's also my understanding that at the adversary hearing, the court ordered an expedited home study to be ordered on some uh, fictive kin placement, the Harris's. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. Is it correct that the child or the children are both actually placed there now they are oh, and they were placed there on the 10th yes ma'am 
Do you have any other updates for the court at this time? Nope, not at this time. What has the department done to try and locate a father for Nolan? So I have asked uh, Ms. Phillips about Nolan's father. She says that she, it's, he's unknown. She's not able to give a name. But Mr. Pilling did advise that he received an email from Ms. Phillips, and he believes that Nolan's father's name was mentioned in that email. Um, I did review that email, and the only name that comes up is just a first name, Ronnie. Um, I do need to reach out to Ms. Phillips to see if she can provide me with the last name. But otherwise, the department does not have a name um, in which we're able to search or try and locate at this time. Is that correct? That's correct. Um, and are you aware of the CCJ search that is currently on file with the court? Yes, ma'am. And is it correct that there were no results as it relates to Nolan? That's correct. I will pass the witness, Judge. Mr. McClinton. Regarding the mother, in the event she handles her, her criminal matters or makes bond, is there a visitation plan in effect? Yes, she does get one hour um, per week. Oh, uh, so by the department. Okay. Yes. All right, I pass the witness. Mr. Dennis. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, Ms. Stewart, did, did Mr. Peeling discuss with you whether he believes he is the child's biological father or not? Yes, he does believe he's the father and he ha he has been paying child support for her. Okay. Um, did you go, uh, he lives in Stephenville, is that right? Yes. Did you go review, see his home yourself or did you send a courtesy record? Um, it was me. Okay. Um, and there were no safety concerns with that home, is that right? That's right. And is it true that he is living with uh, other individuals? Yes. Uh, his Who girlfriend. Is his? Okay. Um, and do they have any children in that home? No children. Um, would you let me know why you believe it's in um, this child's best interest or why this court should do random drug test, or I'm sorry, color code drug testing on Mr. Peeling? Can I not ask him for color? Was it random? Yes. yes I apologize. That's my mistake. Have you asked him to drug test yet? Not yet. Okay. Um, did you discuss drug testing with him? I did. And did he's okay you, with it. Did he say that he would be positive for anything at this time? No, sir. Um, judge, I will pass the witness. Ms. Houston? Just briefly, Honor, Ms. Stewart, the children have made pr good progress since being placed with the family they're placed with currently, correct? That's correct. And they've um, really kind of hit the ground running, getting them services and trying to get them to all the doctor's appointments and getting all those things set up, correct? That's correct. And have you noticed uh, just kind of a change in demeanor and um, kind of a more of a calmness with both kids since they've been placed with the, in the new home? Yes, ma'am. Okay, I'll pass the witness. Anything further of this witness? No, Your Honor. I have one question, Ms. Houston. You said getting all of the necessary things set up. The report talks about Nolan needing extensive therapies. The report didn't talk about Audrey having significant delays. Is that your understanding? That's my understanding, but I believe they're still trying to get her hearing tested because there have been some concerns with that at both at both households. All right. Any further witnesses, Ms. Gungora? I don't have any further witnesses, Your Honor. However, I would ask that um the prior orders regarding Audrey only out of the 414th be transferred and consolidated into this cause. And I would also ask that an attorney be appointed to locate the unknown father of Nolan. It is ordered. Thank you. I'm appointing Brittany Martinez for the unknown father. Anything further, Mr. McClinton? Anything further, Your Honor. Anything further, Mr. Dennis? Uh, Miss Houston, hey, Your Honor, I was able to meet with both children in their home and observe them. Where is the current caregiver? Um, they're located in McLennan County. I'm going to have a quick breakout room with the attorneys. Everybody just hang tight. Uh, it'll be breakout room one. All right, I think everyone's back. The court will continue the temper uh, the department as the temporary managing conservator. I will approve the children's current placement and prior orders for visitation. I will at this time, I'm going to go ahead. I know that Mr. Peeling may not have had a lot of time to go over the family service plan. He certainly hasn't had an opportunity to, to uh, discuss the family service plan with Mr. Dennis. What I'm going to do is go ahead and order the family service plans for the mother and the father at this time. Mr. Dennis, once you have visited with Mr. Peeling, if you believe that the family service plan is not sufficiently narrowly tailored, um, either you can see if there's an agreement with the department and Ms. Houston to change it, or you can file a motion if you would like the court to reconsider the family service plan as it relates to Mr. Peeling. Also. Uh, I'm going to, I think I punted on the 
uh, issue of Mr. Peeling's visits at the adversary because we just didn't know when we would be able to locate Mr. Peeling. Uh, he is here, he's present. I am going to go ahead and order that his visits begin. I think that I, what I'd like is for the department and Ms. Houston and Mr. Dennis all have an opportunity um, to see. I didn't hear anything that would suggest to the court that the visits would be supervised. Um, but I'm going to let y'all talk about that. I would like his visits to be set up where they are consistent. Uh, right now, I'm going to give um, Ms. Houston the primary point person of hopefully getting the department's position, getting Mr. Peeling's position, working with the current caregiver uh, and coming up with a schedule. I, I, it sounds like from talking with you lawyers, y'all will be able to get that done without a lot of issue. Um, also, if y'all will just address if the visits will include Nolan as well, who I understand that Mr. Peeling has a, a, a relationship with. All right. Parents, the law requires that I admonish you if you are unable or unwilling to provide a safe environment for these children, parental okay, rights can be subject to restriction or termination. The, the department is present through Ms. Congora. Charles Levy is the attorney and guardian ad litem for the children. Sam Kinslow is present with the father of William Bryan. Mr. McLeod is present with the mother, Lindsay Hawthorne. Phil Martinez is standing in for Sam Martinez. Um, for the father, Brandon Wayne Davenport. Was anyone expecting Mr. Davenport to be here? No, Your Honor, uh, he's not going to show. He's already expressed that he he wants no part of this case. All right. Uh, and he may have expressed that to the caseworkers as well. I, I don't know, but. All right. All right. All right. You may call. Uh, Ms. Gangora, are we taking up second permanency and resetting the final? That is the department's request at this time, Judge. All right. Um, Ms. Hawthorne, Mr. Hawthorne, if you could please start your cameras, please so that I can see that you're able to participate. All right, and sir, if you're driving, I'll give you just a minute to pull over. It looks like you are in a big truck. It just dawned on me, and I, I looked, I didn't see, that um, Eliza would like to participate, and I'd ask CPS to see if they could arrange that through her school. That may be that number you didn't know. No, there's a parent that I don't rec that I recognize, oh. but... And does okay. Emily, Emily goes by Eliza? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. The department calls Shauna Smith. Ms. Smith, the report indicates that the goal for both of these children is relative conservatorship. Is that correct? Yes. However, there's been some recent changes regarding Emily's placement. Is that right? Yes. Can you <laughs> please let the court know what's been happening? Yes. Emily was previously placed in a fictive kin home. Um, she was there since the removal, but the caregivers were not able to continue to keep her in their home. They felt like her level of needs was too much for them to manage. Um, and so they had requested she be moved prior to school starting. And so she is currently placed in an emergency shelter. And where is that emergency shelter located? It's in Montgomery County. What efforts has the department been making to try and locate a more suitable placement for her? There is still an open CPU request. So CPU is currently looking for foster placement options as well as RTC placement options for Emily. And the department is also still trying to locate any other potential relative placement options for her. Is that right? Yes, that is correct. Have you reached out to both of the parents in this case to see if they have any other names of family members that would be willing to take Emily? We have talked with mom, um, but the father, Mr. Davenport, has not been in communication at all with the department. And was the mother able to give you any names? No. Judge, I'm looking at the screen. It looks like we lost Mr. McLeod. That's not good. And so, Ms. Smith, it sounds like your the department is looking for placement, but unfortunately, we have not found anything as of yet. Is that right? 
That is correct. Does the emergency shelter have an expiration date? Well, with all emergency shelter placements, we are limited to 90 days, though sometimes a waiver can be provided. Um, And so she was placed there early this month. So we're looking at 90 days. Hopefully we can find um, a less restrictive placement for her um, prior to the 90 days. And while Emily is currently in an emergency shelter, William is and has remained in the same placement since removal. Is that correct? He hasn't remained. This hasn't been his only placement. He was previously placed with the paternal grandmother, but the department did move him to the paternal uncle and aunt um, in March after the department had um, a great deal of safety concerns with him remaining with the paternal grandmother. And he's doing well in that placement. Yes, he is doing very well in that placement. And I believe that the placement is actually working on getting the license. Is that correct? Yes, that is correct. And they are committed for the long haul. They would be willing to adopt William. They are also open to um, the possibility of a PMC agreement, but they are most definitely committed to him forever. Any issues or concerns that need to be brought to the court's attention regarding the children specifically? Um, I did want to inform the court um, Little William is receiving speech therapy services through the school, Um, but in addition to that, he is also on the Dell Children's waiting list for ABA therapy, but I have also called Focus this morning, and I am pending a call back to find out when he would be able to get started with them as well, and so we're going to have him on both both, um, waiting lists concurrently, so the soonest available will take. Thank you, Ms. Smith. Now, you mentioned that Mr. Davenport has not been involved at all and not in communication with the department, and I believe that's indicated in your report as well, correct? Yes. What are the existing safety concerns that the department has regarding the mother specifically? I'm sorry, can you repeat that? Yes. What are the specific safety concerns? I have a question. Is my lawyer back in here? Yes. Okay, thank you. What are the existing safety concerns that exist regarding the mother, Ms. Hawthorne? The department continues to have concerns about Ms. Hawthorne's addressing her mental health needs. Um, As everybody is aware, these children came into care due to the mental health concerns and the instability. Um, And it's our understanding Ms. Hawthorne's is not receiving the needed treatment for her mental health services. And um, we, though we have offered those services through the department, Um, And the courtesy worker in um, the Metroplex has offered services to her through the local mental health authorities. Um, She has told the courtesy worker that she wants to go through her own um, providers. And so the department continues to have a concern about that. As recent as August 21st, the courtesy worker attempted to do a home visit with Ms. Hawthorne as well. And she came out, um, shut the door behind her and was hostile with a courtesy worker and did not allow her into the home. And so the department continues to have concerns about um, the up and down, the mental stability of Ms. Hawthorne um, currently. Okay. And I believe that your report states that sometime in May is when she moved to the Metroplex area. Is that correct? That is correct. And is that around the time when services oh, stopped? Oh, Miss Hawthorne, you can't be making faces like that. This is just like we're in court, even though it seems like we're at an informal setting. Do I need to turn my camera off, ma'am? No, we need to be able to see you so that I can know that you're able to see well, it. I don't see my lawyer. I see you in court. Or can you not connect? Do you see him now, ma'am? He's waving I'll at you. I'll put you on my speakerphone okay. here. Am I able to proceed, Judge? I guess we've lost, somehow we've lost Mr. Hawthorne's ability to hear. <coughs> Judge, just, I'm sorry, Judge, can, does Ms. Hawthorne, can she see me? I've been waving. I just want to make sure. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Kinslow, do you have Mr. Hawthorne on your phone? Just this moment, I put him on the phone. I'm sorry if I interrupted you somewhat there. I was trying to see if he could work my speakerphone while he's on the video. That's, and, that's fine. Can he hear? 
Can you hear yet, sir? No, I can only hear you. Okay, I'm going to put my phone closer to the speakers. Hopefully, not unplug things. Okay. Uh, can you hear me now, sir? A little bit. Okay, wonderful. Everybody, speak up. Go ahead, Miss Gangora. Judge, I'll admit I lost my place. So, Miss Smith, um, just to recap, um, I believe you were saying that um, there have been some issues with Miss Hawthorne specifically since she's moved to the Metroplex area. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. And I believe I was asking you if that's kind of when services stopped for Miss Hawthorne is when she made that move. Is that correct? Yes, that is correct. And your report also indicates that there are some concerns that you have regarding her living arrangement and just the overall lack of stability. And I believe you touched on that as well. Is that right? Yes. What are the department's continued concerns regarding Mr. Hawthorne? Mr. Hawthorne has had no visits with his son um, since March. The current caregivers have been willing to supervise visitation for him, but he's become hostile with the current caregivers and was threatening. It's also been offered for him to have visitation um, through um, video. I'm sorry, through video. Um, and he has not um, done this. He hasn't followed hold up in asking questions in regards to his son. Um, there continues to be a concern about his mental health needs as well. He was recommended for a psychiatric evaluation through Dr. Schinder um, due to his ongoing mental health concerns. In our recent PC, Mr. Hawthorne reported um, to all of us that were on that the only reason he and Lindsay were currently separated right now is because the department required it and that they are safe and they are fine. I'm sorry, Ms. Smith. I you were interrupted. If you'll go ahead and finish that sentence where we can hear you. I heard that the father informed everyone at the PC that the only reason he is separated and then I then I quit hearing. That the only reason he and Lindsay are separated at this time is because the department said they had to be um, and that there are no issues between them. Um, and so that is a huge concern for the department. One second, Mr. Hawthorne, that is not appropriate behavior for a courtroom. All right. Well, I'm sorry, but when all that is a lie, all right, then it's Ms. not Ms. hard to deal with that. I've muted you, Mr. Kinslow, because your client is coming through your speaker and talking to the court in that this is not how court works. Sir, your lawyer will have an opportunity to, to call you as a witness, but interrupting the proceedings is not appropriate and making facial gestures is not appropriate either. You may continue, Ms. Gungora. Yes, Judge. And Ms. Smith, just to kind of wrap things up, is the behavior that we've seen in court today by both Ms. Hawthorne and Mr. Hawthorne indicative of how they've been dealing with the department? Yes, that is correct. Thank you. I'll pass the witness. Mr. Martinez. No questions, Your Honor. Mr. Kinslow. Yes, thank you. Um, Ms. Smith, following the uh, uh, permacy conference, uh, did I not send a, a, a pretty good stack of documents showing the compliance by Mr. Hawthorne and services? Yes, sir. I have received all documentation of him engaging in his services, but it's his lack of behavioral change. Okay. So, and, and I'm reading your report, you seem to take you, you acknowledge receiving those things and the report sent to the court does show substantial compliance with services by Mr. Hawthorne, does it not? It states that he's engaged in services, yes. Okay. What particular barrier does he need to work on to establish reunification? To be able to address his mental health concerns, to be able to acknowledge that his relationship with Lindsay and himself is a dangerous relationship, to want to build a relationship with his son, to recognize the need for to prioritize his son's needs, um, the concern of bickering and lack of acceptance responsibility, but then refusal to engage in any kind of relationship with his son is a great deal of concern for the department. Little William is on the autism spectrum, and so he requ requires a great deal of consistency and support, and he has failed to do any of those things. Yeah. On the mental health issue, is it 
the only basis for that is Dr. Schindler saying psychiatric consultation would appear indicated. Is that the only thing we have on that? From a, from a provider, yes, sir. Okay. Has a, a provider been provided for Mr. Hawthorne for the psychiatric consultation? We have not specifically given him one, no. During the permanency conference, we discussed that, and he stated that he refused to do that because he was already receiving his services through Dr. Schindler. The department would be more than happy to get that taken care of for him. Are you asking that that be made a part of his service plan then? Yes, sir, we are. And I apologize, I'm going to need to get with him on the visitation issue. The department hasn't told me that, uh, hasn't contacted me to try to encourage him to have visits, has it? We have in previous months, yes, sir. But as of recently, no. I know that you have tried to assist in supporting that. Our last conversation was from our last court hearing where um, the caregivers were willing to supervise visitation, but it's been an ongoing issue. Okay. The, neither the goal or the concurrent goal states family reunification. Is the department willing to consider family reunification with increased engagement in services? The department is always considering family reunification as a goal. Um, we are always, we are required to offer services, but our permanency plans on file will not be changing. And is this the department's position that these parents should not be together? Is that an, a position that the department has as an absolute in this case? The department has a great deal of concern about the relationship between Mr. and Mrs. Hawthorne, but ultimately it's their decision what they choose to do in their relationship. But we do have a great deal of concern because it resulted in one person being shot by the other. It could have resulted in death by one, if not more. I mean, the mother has reported to me that she was fearful he was going to shoot everyone in the home. So yes, the department has a great deal of concern. Is there some service that needs to be added to be addressed to address that issue if they're going to remain as a couple? I believe that the services that are the therapy that's being provided is sufficient to address that. But ultimately, it's going to have to be a behavioral change by Mr. Hawthorne. He's going to have to be willing to address, admit and address those issues. So if the individual counseling by the various providers for the, for the husband and wife provides that the uh, reunification is appropriate, the department will look into that then. The department is not going to change its permanency plans, but the department is always required to offer the parents services, and that's always a consideration. But at this time, the department is not changing the permanency plans. I'll pass the witness. Mr. McLeod. Yes. Um, Ms. Smith, just, just in terms of the separation of Ms. Hawthorne, or Ms. Uh, Hawthorne and Mr. Hawthorne. Uh, Miss Miss Hawthorne separated from him by her own decision, correct? That's my understanding, yes, sir. And in fact, sought assistance from the department and discussions were had with you regarding how to assist her in doing that. Yes, sir, that is correct. Okay. So she has separated herself from Mr. Hawthorne. That was my understanding, but after having the permanency conference, I think it's fair to say that the department does have concern about that. Well, well tell me what basis there is for that concern. The conversations that were had that they were in communication because prior to the permanency conference, Ms. Hawthorne had said she wasn't um, communicating with him for her safety. Okay. Do, do you, does the department, well, do you know what communications they may have had or what the, what the subject matter of those communications might've been? I'm certain that whenever we visited in the office, that is what she reported to me, um, was that she was concerned, um, for her safety if she was communicating with him, but then during the permanency conference, it was apparent that they were communicating with one another. But my question, Ms. Smith, was what is the subject matter of those communications to the department's understanding? I'm not sure. Okay. Would it be unreasonable for them to potentially communicate 
regarding their son? I don't think it's an unreasonable, but given the circumstances and her report of such fear, I do have a concern that, that she would com- continue communication with him. Okay, but she's, they, okay. Um, do you have any evidence that she's having any type of face-to-face contact with him other than potentially communicating in some form via text or by phone calls or things like that? I don't have any evidence except what she told me that she communicated through him with him through Facebook Messenger and then would block him. Okay. The the report indicates uh, that that Ms. Hawthorne did the psychological evaluation. Is the department asking for anything to be added based upon that to her plan based upon that report? A psychiatric assessment. Okay. Now, at the at the meeting the other day we had on this the permanency conference, Ms. Ms. Hawthorne and I think the department knows was hospitalized in a psychiatric institution or a hospital for my understanding three weeks of inpatient versus three and and three weeks versus outpatient at canyon creek i think that's in temple the department's aware of that correct yes sir that is correct we are and and she received psychiatric care at that facility yes sir and she admitted herself to that facility yes sir has the department obtained those records yet? We have not. Um, the department has got, had gotten her to sign a release of information through your office. Canyon Creek did not believe it was sufficient. So we got Canyon Creek's release of information. We have requested those and we still have not received anything back. Did, did Ms. Hawthorne sign the Canyon Creek authorization that they, that Canyon Creek gave you? Yes, she did. So she's fully cooperated with the department in terms of getting her psychiatric records. From Canyon Creek, yes. Now, she was hospitalized in Canyon Creek. I I want to say it was in March. Does, am I, is my recollection correct on that, Ms. Smith? Do you recall? I don't have the exact dates, but I think that's correct. February, March. Okay. It it. Why would the department want Ms. Hawthorne to get another psychiatric evaluation if she was hospitalized for three weeks in a psychiatric uh, hospital, followed by three weeks of outpatient care under the care of a psychiatrist? And you could get those records and see what 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 they say. I know you haven't gotten them, but I mean, why would you want another one? Because she is supposed to be receiving ongoing psychiatric treatment and medical care. I did receive the list of discharge medications from you all yesterday, but she's not taking any of those medications and she doesn't feel that it's necessary to take any of those medications. And so the department is concerned about her lack of following through on that medical care. And so we are concerned. And the issue that we also have is after she left Canyon Creek, she reported she went to Canyon Creek because of all of her trauma with Mr. Hawthorne. From Canyon Creek, she then returned back to her relationship with Mr. Hawthorne. And so it's a great deal of concern about her mental health that she would return back there, given that was the reason she went to the hospital to begin with. And and then she separated herself from him by her own choice, correct? Yes, an answer. Yes, sir. Now, is... uh, did she not report that she saw a psychiatrist at family practice as late as May? I was not aware of that. Yeah, I think that came up at the meeting and I know there was a lot of stuff flying around then. Um, have you, do you need a release from Ms. Hawthorne regarding getting those records? We will have to have a release in order to get those records. Yes, sir. If you will get that to me, I will get that signed by her and get it to you as soon as possible. Well, one second. If the hospital wants their own form and Ms. Smith doesn't even know where that place is, perhaps it would shorten the thing if you could get the correct release of information from whatever provider it is and get it to Ms. Smith. That'd be fine, Judge. I think what I said was it's a family practice here. We know where it was. 
Okay, except for the department probably doesn't have their release, the release of information that family practice wants, just like Canyon okay. Creek didn't honor the one prepared by the department. So it would that's, short circuit that, it. That's fine. I'll, I'll do that, Judge. That, that's fine. I um, signed one for CPS at Canyon Creek, too, before I left Canyon Creek. And, it, and they had one signed while I was in Canyon Creek when they came to see me there. Next question, Mr. McLeod. Um, in terms of the counseling that she had, Doctor Schinder from with Doctor Schinder, is uh, did Doctor did she complete the counseling with Doctor Schinder? Did he release her, or because she moved, did he just discharge her because of the move? Do you know? Because she moved, he discharged her. I did speak with him to get clarification on that, and he stated he would continue. If she were still in the area, he would want to continue with individual therapy with her. Okay. And is it not true that she is having individual therapy on her own in Fort Worth? That's my understanding, but the department has no information to show for that. Have you requested any type of authorization to obtain those records? I specifically have not. Okay. We'll, we'll be happy to get you any counseling records you want. Uh, the report indicates that Ms. Hawthorne is still testing positive for marijuana, correct? Yes, sir, that is correct. Okay, now I know that it was brought up that she uses meta marijuana for medicinal purposes, or I should say cannabis. I don't know that it's marijuana, marijuana, but it's T THC. Has she provided you with documentation showing that that's prescribed for her? There was a document. There was a piece of documentation provided to the previous worker, but I have not yet reviewed it. Okay, so you didn't mention it today. I just want to make make sure. Does the department at, at this point in time view her testing positive for THC to be an issue in the case? The department does have a concern about her use for marijuana as she's using it to substitute for her medical, for her prescribed medication for her mental health needs. Okay. Uh, pass the witness. Mr. Levy. Thank you, Judge. Uh, briefly, Ms. Smith, you've been very thorough. Um, just to be clear, there's no question that little uh, William is making incredible progress since being with the Greens. Yes, he is. And in fact, um, they have shared with you, and I believe you've testified, but to be clear, he needs a significant amount of structure because of um, being on the spectrum, correct? That's correct. And consistency is part of needing that structure, correct? Correct. And candidly, before coming into CPS care, and unfortunately, part of the time, perhaps uh, even after with the first placement, he pretty much lived a life of chaos, correct? I think that that's fair to say, yes. And so as we sit here today, mom and dad have exactly, at most, a month or two of anything that even resembles any kind of consistency with their own lives, let alone taking care of uh, candidly, a special needs kid that needs some significant help. Yes. All right. Would you agree with me? It would be completely inappropriate for mom or dad to say anything to or around William that has to do with getting him back in their care where you'll be home soon or anything like that. Yes. And, and to be clear, I'm not saying that's happening. Uh, but I just wanted, that would be very much something that uh, CPS would not uh, think would be in his best interest. And I have no doubt the judge would agree. That's correct. Thank you. That's all. Anything further of this witness, Ms. Gungora? No, judge. Anything further from anyone of this witness? Your next witness, Ms. Gungora? No further witnesses, Your Honor. Any witnesses, Mr. Martinez? No witnesses, Your Honor. Any witnesses, Mr. Kinslow? Yes, I do call my client, Mr. William Hawthorne. Go ahead, Mr. Kinslow. Mr. Hawthorne, it's 
possible the department is going to be asked that a psychiatric consultation be added to your services. I don't know if the judge will order that or not. Are you willing to do a psychiatric consultation? I mean, if that's what they want, then yes. Okay. But so you're willing to do that if, it, if the judge do, decides to order that. Mm-hmm. And the department would have to provide you a provider, you understand? Yes. Uh, on visits with your child, can you give an explanation of why you have not been able to visit? Uh, when the last uh, caseworker was working with us, uh, all communication was supposed to be done through the caseworker, and they were supposed to let me know. And I have not received, since they changed caseworkers, I haven't heard anything from her. Okay. Well, let me encourage you to talk to me after the hearing, and we will discuss how to get that going. You need to, when things break down, get with me within 24 to 48 hours so we can do that. Do you understand that? Okay. Do you understand the need for you to visit your child to build that relationship? Yes. Are you willing to in at the caregiver's home? If that's what it is, yes. Like I said, but that, but like I said, all that was supposed to be set up through CPS, through our thing, because they were saying that we didn't need to be communicating to each other, so they were supposed to do it. Okay. And understanding that, if if you and the caregivers have some issues regarding behavior, are you willing to adjust your behavior for the sake of the visits? Mm-hmm. Okay. And if so, if you could have an increased amount of visits by being with the caregiver, you would you would be willing to do that versus having to yeah. do visits at the department. Yes. Okay. That's 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 never been the problem. Okay. That's, that was always okay. the plan. What what are your plans on this relationship? Are you are having a relationship with the mother, the child, or do you have a, or is it a co-parenting relationship? Who do we lose? Uh, it's supposed to be co-parenting. I believe you lost Miss Smith. Man. She's on my phone. Okay. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Okay. I, I didn't know if you were objecting to my question. I'm sorry. I, no, I heard an, a, a noise that we had lost someone, and uh, I was trying to determine okay. who was missing before we continued. Okay. Okay. And, and I'm sorry. I kind of got distracted there, Miss Talton. Are you saying you're co-parenting? Is that your relationship? Yeah, that was that is that was the deal. Is co-parenting. You think co-parenting requires some communications with each other? Yes. Then? Yes. What are your plans for if you can be reunified with your child, or do you have plans for where your child would live? If if, if he's with me, then that's where he would live. If, if they give it to, if she gets custody, then he'll be living with her. That was it was never a problem with either him or him or I mean her or me. But the point was, it was just one of us. On your personal situation, are, are you uh, a, a long haul driver or something? No, local. Local. So you have the ability to provide daycare and, and, and take care mm-hmm. of your child. Okay. What, one second. We just need to be really careful. I think there's part of the problem is that you're on Mr. Kinslow's phone, but you're already answering before he's finished talking. Starting next week, we're going to have a court reporter again on Tuesdays. And so y'all please really watch not speaking on top of one another. Is there anything else you would like the court to know today that I have not asked you? Okay. Uh, within uh, Ms. Smith's t- statement about uh, me and Ms. Uh, Hawthorne's relationship and basically saying the toxicity of it, it is not what they have in the court statements, what it was, yes, we did have problems, but a lot of those problems started after she was raped and she has stepped and she has put it up and we were both dealing with problems. So we both didn't know how to deal with it and it became a toxic problem then. It was not toxic before that. Right. And the fair thing, like she was saying, okay, I understand, but like I said, we were still dealing with us having problems and that was what it became. But when she admitted herself into the mental institution and then she ended up not having a place to stay, when she came back and stayed with me, we had no problems, we had no issues, but the deal was she was just there until she could find a place. And that's what it was. It was not about us being in a relationship or anything like that. Okay. So that's where my problem is. It's like every time they have a statement, each statement is way out there, way over the board and it's never what is actually happening. And then the process of our son being in a chaotic atmosphere, no. Our son was fine. We both made sure he was taken care of. He had it structured. He did things in the way he needed to do it. When he had school, we 
went through all the little stuff that the teachers wanted us to do with him and made plans with, within that structure. Do I take it you're willing to continue to uh, get involved in whatever type of uh, education you need to be to be able to take care of a special needs child? Yes. Because, like I said, I grew up as a researcher. I have uh, problems with certain things, like uh, comprehending sometimes. I have problems with that. I see things and I forgot what it's called, but like I've, I've had I have special needs problems with certain things. So I understand what a special needs child goes through. You're willing to provide this, this structure and consistency that your child needs? Yes. Okay. You think you've been able to, to clear up some of the misunderstandings that the department may have expressed to the court? Yes. Okay. I'll pass the witness. Mr. McLeod? No questions of this witness, Judge. Mr. Levy? Judge, I'll try to move quickly. Um, did you have a problem with mom when she shot you, or that was after the problems were over? When we had, when she shot me, like I said, we were going through the stress of her being raped, and my sister, like I said, I was still dealing with my sister dying, and she got raped twice, and she was having flashbacks and problems, and dealing with her stuff. That's why another reason why she went to the mental hospital, and me having problems myself. So if I got loud, she took it and felt like I was being uh, more aggressive than I was. But the the day that I got shot, yes, yeah, I, like I said, I was aggressive because I was I had a mental break. But that was why I agreed to talk to Dr. Sander, agreed to do all this stuff because I felt like I had a break. In terms of in terms of characteristics of a father, you would agree that part of what a father does is to actually be there for their child, correct? Yes. And you would also and I was always there. And I was sir, there. Let me ask, sir, what, one second. The question. Go ahead, okay, Mr. Go ahead. Go ahead. Your question and Mr. Hawthorne, wait till Mr. Levy finishes the question before you start answering. And sir, if you'd actually oh, answer the first question. Oh, great. And you would agree that one of the things a good father does is to provide medical care for a child, correct? Yes. And an education? Yes. And provides financial support for the child? Yes. What have you done to financially support your child in the last six months? Uh, right now, nothing, because I have not been with, other than my mom, I helped her. Well, that wasn't my question. But my question is, what have you done to financially support your child in the last six months? And you said nothing? Because, as like I said, my child has not been with me. So it's kind yeah. of hard to support my child when my child is not with me. I'm going to object to everything that you said because it was non-responsive. Judge, it would be helpful to get through this if you would actually answer my question. I think he answered your question. You may ask the next question. And so what amount of money do you make in your career and, and what you're doing a job wise? Uh, let's see, on a weekly basis, I make at least $800 a week. I mean, take home $800 a week. All right. And, and what are you willing to pay in child support to support your child? Well, it's just, like I said, if I have to pay child support, then it's whatever the, the amount is. I, I can't. That's what the what your home does. Like, like when I have to pay child what, support. What, what, one second, Mr. Hawthorne, if you'll just answer the question that's asked he said he said what are you willing to pay to support your child just come up with a number I, like i said i don't know i don't have a number that's what i'm saying okay next question do you think 250 dollars a month would be unreasonable i mean not really okay um in terms of, you said you have certain problems that you were either going through or have gone through, and I did not understand what you said. Have you been diagnosed with any type of mental illness or medical illness? No, I, I had a, uh, like I said, I was going through depression. Like I said, that was the only thing. When my sister died, I had a bout of depression. Okay. And, and that was it? Yes. Okay. Um, in terms of mom, when you communicate with mom, do y'all meet in person, you talk on the telephone, you use FaceTime, you use, you know, some online thing like, you know, Messenger? Yes. I mean, which, which one or ones? Messenger, FaceTime, or like a text. Okay. And how often do you talk to mom? Probably once 
every two to three weeks. All right. Because you said you talked to her for co-parenting purposes, but you haven't seen your child since March. Not a lot of co-parenting going on there, is there? Okay. Like I said, again, that was what the department was supposed to set up those visits. And I did not get anything set up. And then y'all changed. They kept changing the providers and all that. And we kept working on that. And that was it. And hey. Next and like question. Said, only that my mom, and then, like I said, the only time I ever seen him was because when he was with my mom. And I all right, Mr. Hawthorne, and- Mr. Hawthorne, you are launching into a huge narrative that is way beyond the scope of the question. I've got all the way till 12 o'clock, but this hearing should not take that long if you'll just listen and answer the question that is asked. I'll Next pass the witness. Ms. Gangora. I have no questions at this time, Judge. Mr. Martinez? No questions. Mr. Kinslow, anything further of this witness? No, Your Honor. Your next witness, Mr. Kinslow? I'm sorry. Yeah, no other witnesses. Any witnesses, Mr. McLeod? Yes, ma'am. I'll call Ms. Hawthorne, please. All right. Mr. McLeod, Ms. Hawthorne, if you'll just ask a one fact question. Ma'am, if you'll just answer the question, it'll move much faster for the lawyers to present their evidence. Go ahead. Ms. Hawthorne, you heard Ms. Smith's testimony about the concerns that the department has regarding you? Yes, sir. Okay. One of the things she said was that you're not addressing your mental health needs. What are you doing right now to address your mental health needs? I had to change my Medicaid provider because I moved and Superior didn't accept that area. But I have been with MHMR and family practice this entire time since I was 18 years old. I have been under the care of a doctor. When you say MHMR and family practice, is that MHMR here in Waco? It was until they discontinued me to family practice. Okay. And then um, I've been under the care of a doctor since I was 18 years old for my mental health. And every month I go to my appointments. Do you, are you seeing any mental health care providers up in the Dallas Fort Worth area where you currently live? Yes. I was just um, prescribed the THC um, instead of the psych meds that they had me on because I have night terrors from them. I have an adverse reaction to everything they've tried. Who, who are, who have you seen in the Dallas Fort Worth area? Um, her name is on the prescription that I had sent y'all. I sent it to the CPS caseworker and to you. Okay. Is is that person a a medical doctor or do yes, you know? sir. Yes, sir. And I'm also seeing a group I'm having in a group counseling as well. And who is the counselor that you see? It's a group counseling for trauma victims. Is that through a counseling service or is that a, just a support group? And I shouldn't say it's just through in Medicaid. Can we please speak one at a time? My, Sorry. My, my fault, Judge. The So who is that? Is that through a particular counseling service or do you know, is it through a particular ca- individual counselor? Yes, sir. It was through um, family practice, but since they had to switch my um, my insurance provider, I'll be ch- uh, changed over to a new caseload, and then I'll uh, they will. So my uh, family doctor and my psychiatrist and everyone can all talk to each other, so they're all on the same page. Okay, I bet, I, and maybe it's just, maybe, I, insurance company sets sets up all the so they all talk to each other. So it's all through Medicaid. Okay, and again, this is, I may have misunderstood. Are you in a counseling group now? Yes, sir. And, and who is that? It's just a video just like this once a week with a group of people when we talk about trauma. It's through Medicaid. Uh, it doesn't say MHMR or, fam- plan, you know, nothing like that. So I don't know. Okay. So are you taking, well, let me back up. We provided the department with the list of the medications you were taken when or taking or pre- prescribed when you were discharged from the mental health hospital from Canyon Creek, correct? Yes. Are you taking any of those medications now? No. The doctor slowly took me off of two of them, and that's all I was on when I had left there was two of them. 
the other ones were just for being in the facility. And when you say the doctor took you off them, which doctor is that? Uh, my outpatient doctor that saw me after my inpatient stay. And is that at the Canyon Creek? Okay. There was a, some question about a home visit and the courtesy worker coming. Did the courtesy worker come to the home where you live? Yes, she's been in my home. I invited, I, I um, asked her if she wanted to come in this time, but she said no. And I didn't want to let the air conditioner out. I didn't slam the door behind me or nothing. I just taught Texas, but she has been in my home. She has seen. The same courtesy worker that came this mm -hmm. time? Yes. And I've contacted her three times asking for group counseling in person in Fort Worth. Um, when was the last time that you saw a psychiatrist? I mean, have you, well, let me back up. Let me, let's, let's see if I can get a better question. When, after being discharged from Canyon Creek and going through their outpatient program, have you seen a psychiatrist since then? Um, is Dr. Schinder a psychiatrist? No, ma'am. Okay. <laughs> I'm not sure. Okay. Um, no, I don't think so. Okay. Have you seen anyone at family practice since being released from Canyon Creek? Yes. My doctor and psychiatrist from family practice, I have seen them. Yes. Okay. So, so that one of your doctors at family practice is specifically a psychiatrist? I'm not sure if it's psychiatrist or psychologist, but it's for my mental health. Yes. Since coming out of Canyon Creek and the treatment that you got there, do you feel mm -hmm. like you're in a better place? Yes, okay. definitely. Are you working now? I am picking up um, odd and end jobs on the side because I'm on Social Security, so it's hard um, and doing what I can. So when you say you're on Social Security, you're on Social Security Disability? Yes, sir. And what for? For my mental health. PTSD, to be exact. Uh, thank you. No other questions. I'll pass the witness, Judge. Mr. Levy. Thank you, ma'am. Um, you've been seeing a mental health provider since you were 18? Yes, sir. How old are you now? I am 36. And if you were asked to come up with a list of everybody you've seen working backwards, how far back could you go? Um, I have issues with memory. So everything like names and stuff, I have to write it all down to refer back. It's part of my PTSD. And, and what other daily issues do you deal with besides issues with memory? Um, I, I go through... Um, like right now, it's taking me a long time for my thoughts in my head to get to my mouth. So it, um, I have like a delay sometimes. Um, and I have panic attacks. Um, it's hard for me to be around a whole lot of people. Um, and I don't like like stuff popping up and not knowing it's there. And I'll, I'll have a panic attack. Okay. Anything else? Yeah. I mean, I, I it, it's comes and goes, you know, the worst times I've had was on certain psych meds, you know, but um, I'm, I think I'm doing pretty good now, but it's a continued process, you know. Um, and that's a process you're still in the middle of, right? I will be for the rest of my life, sir. Yeah. Um, child's getting good care with the current caregivers. Yes, I'm so happy to see him thriving more and doing better. He's still not to where he was when he left the house, but he's doing a lot better with this with this placement. Yes. Um, right. Uh, now, the doctor at family practice, you don't know who is your family practice doctor? I would have to look it up. I don't um, I know it's Dr. Quarterwig is my doctor. But I can't remember the psych lady's name because they just changed um, changed me to the other one. So I don't remember. And it's your testimony that when the records are obtained from Canyon Creek, it's going to show that the doctors there weaned you off of two meds that you were taking. Is that correct? 
Yeah, they took me off of everything but two meds before I left the facility because they were just to keep me calm in the facility. And, and, and so what meds were you on when you got to the facility? Nothing. All right, well, And you took yourself off your meds? No, my family doctor took me off of my meds in Waco, Dr. Cordovig. Right. So then if the records are obtained from your family doctor at, at family practice and at um, uh, the psych hospital, your testimony is that those records will show that you were taken off meds, except for the two that were you were still on when you left Canyon Creek and they weaned you off of those at Canyon Creek, correct? Mm -hmm. Is that a yes? Yes, sir. And then who is the doctor that put you on cannabis or whatever we're calling it, THC or medical marijuana? Um, the doctor that I am seeing in Fort Worth. And, and that, I, I, I saw him one time that I have no idea what his name is. It's on the bottle. Do you realize you, you don't really know the name of most of your providers, which I That's would think called is memory else. loss from PTSD, okay, okay. which I have addressed. Ms. Hawthorne, I have told you once, don't interrupt a lawyer while he is asking you a question. So, ma'am, I mean, in all fairness, to, I can't hear I think she's saying saying. she can't hear, but I'm not quite sure why. We can't well, hear you. She, she, she can she you hear me? me? Yes. I can't. Okay. Please, please I, I could not hear you. Right. So, please don't interrupt the lawyer again yes. while he's trying to ask a question. I'm sorry, ma'am. I don't know who you are. Are you the judge? Yes, ma'am. Okay. I'm sorry, ma'am. I did not hear you a minute ago when you were just talking to me. Is that what you're saying? To not interrupt? Probably. Okay. My, my phone's breaking up. Okay. Next question, Mr. Levy. You've seen a doctor one time after having 18 years of treatment who put you on marijuana and you can't tell me the name of the doctor. Do you not find that odd? It is called PTSD and memory loss, which we have covered in every Ms. single. Ms. Ms. Hawthorne, he just asked you if that was odd. That's a yes or no question. If you'll just I don't think it's odd because I know the conditions okay. that come with okay. PTSD. Stop talking. When you answered the question, then stop talking so that he can ask another question. This is not a time for you to be arguing with a lawyer. I'm not, ma'am. I'm trying to answer the question like you asked. Next question, Mr. Lady. Where is the doctor located? Like what street? What's the address? What city? It is an online doctor. Okay, so you saw- And I did a video visit just like I'm doing with you right now. And so like- I, your I, question. I could call anybody out of the, out of the, um, out of the phone book probably or online and get them to prescribe me something too. Is that how it works? I'm not sure, sir. You might ask the um, people who do those types of things. Well, how long did you talk to the online doctor before he put you on medical marijuana? That is between me and my doctor. That's comp doctor patient confidentiality. Judge, instruct the witness to answer the question. Answer the question, Ms. Hawthorne. It was a quite a long, confident, uh, con long, lengthy conversation because we had to go to in, into my PTSD background and um, the times that I've been raped and my first husband and being um, tied up and beaten and held under the water until I couldn't breathe. Um, so we had to have a very lengthy conversation about it to get. Yeah. And how long, what's your best estimate of how long that was? Probably about an hour and a half, two hours. And what phone number did you use to call this doctor? He called me. He solicited you? You didn't find him? No, I found him online through the compassionate usage, uh, compassion usage. Uh, I can't, I don't know how you say it. Um, it's it's a registry where they register people in Texas for medical marijuana. It was my family doctor that asked me to, to contact him. Next question. So then your family doctor's records will no doubt document that they told you to contact him. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, and how would CPS or me or anybody else find this person to get your records from this conversation? I'm sorry. Can you ask that again? I'm, I'm having what? What did you say? Uh, how, how do you find this person? You don't know his name. It was on the phone, so he doesn't have an address. Oh, doc I'm sorry. Go ahead. I'm not talking family practice. I'm talking the medical marijuana doctor. How does anybody get in touch with him? Dr. Cordowig 
referred me from family practice, referred me, gave me the numbers. It was a list of numbers. And I went through and found the cheapest one that would see me. And so you don't have any of that information any longer? Yes, I do. All right. Well, can you provide it to your lawyer if, if the judge would, would ask for you to do that so CPS can follow up? Of course. All right. And yes. when are you going to have another another session with this doctor? Um, you have to have it updated every six months in the registry. Um, so I will be seeing him in four months. And so you have a prescription for the marijuana or yes. for whatever it is? THC gummies. Yes, I do. All right. And have you provided uh, a debt? Can you provide a copy of that to your lawyer? Have you done that already? I have done that. All right. And um, that's the only meds you're taking? Yes. And where is that doctor located generally, if you know? Didn't you ask me this? Ma'am? Right. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. Am I not understanding correctly? Which doctor are you asking? The doctor that prescribed the, the medical marijuana. Is he in California? Is he in okay, Texas? I have an address I can send, but I don't remember information that correctly. So right. I can send you the address, though. But have to be a Texas doctor to write a prescription. It's a Fort Worth okay. address, if that helps. All right. Um, and do you have a, a provider? Of, I mean, who is your regular provider now? Is it still the doctor in, in uh, the Waco area? No, I would have to get you his name because I have not yet been. Okay. When's the last time you saw the, the folks at family practice in Waco? The day before I left. I don't know when that was, ma'am. May 20 something. All right. And, and the reason you haven't, and how often would you, were you seeing that doctor? I was going to group counseling every week, twice a week. And I was seeing him. Usually it's about every month, but I was seeing him more because I was having headaches. Okay. And then last group of questions. Tell me about this, this online group that Mr. Um, McLeod was asking you about. You said mm -hmm. it's through Medicare. Um, who leads the group? Uh, Medicaid uh, put me in the group. My, my uh, case manager started right. me in the group. All right. um, and it's, a group of peer, it's a peer group for okay. trauma. And, and is it just people that, that are having um, issues like you or is, it, is there a leader? It's that's for rape victims and trauma a, victims of family violence. Is there a leader of the group, ma'am, that, that is a psychiatrist, psychologist, counselor, LPC, anything like that? Yes, I'm sure that there's a lady that takes, um, makes sure that we're there and lets Medicaid know and all that. And do you have that person's name? No, I do not. All right. And, and, and who is the name of your case manager with Medicare or Medicaid? I don't know. And, and how would we get that name? Um, I would have to look it up. Like I said, I have to write everything down because even CPS, I can't remember the names because they change so much. Okay. Well, well, let me ask you this and forget CPS. Why aren't you writing these things down if you know you can't remember them? I am writing these things down. That's why I told you I would have to refer to my notes and let you know. And, and so that's something you can get to Mr. McLeod later today? Yes, sir. All right. Thank you. That's all. It's all on apps on my phone. That's why I can't look at it. Ms. Gungora, any questions of this witness? I don't have any questions, Judge. Any questions, Mr. Martinez? No questions. Any questions of this witness, Mr. Kinslow? No, no questions, Your Honor. Any further questions of this witness, Mr. McLeod? No, ma'am. Any further witnesses? No other witnesses. All right. Service plans. I will continue the department as the temporary managing conservator. The court finds that the department has made reasonable efforts to reunify and also to make and finalize an alternate plan. The court approves of the department's plan. The court finds that the mother and Mr. Davenport are not making sufficient progress on the family service plans. Mr. Hawthorne is making some progress on his family service plan. I finished it. Both. <clears throat> Parents, the law requires that I admonish you if you are unable or unwilling to provide a safe environment for your children, your parental rights to be subject to restriction or termination. Our dismissal date is November 6, 2023. 
Would, uh, would y'all like to go to mediation before the final hearing? I don't think that'd be a good use of anyone's time, Judge. Set this for an in-person final hearing on October 19th, 2023 at nine o'clock. I'm sorry. I'm going to be out of the state the week of the 16th. All right. October 26th, nine o'clock in person in the annex. Do y'all believe you'll need half a day or a full day? It, it, I think it would be prudent to schedule a full day. All right. I will mark off the entire day, uh, absent some emergency that I might shove in for a half hour. Um, we'll see y'all back. Um, one second. Ms. Green, you are the current caregiver and you have been here. Uh, you have a right to be heard at a permanency hearing. Is there anything that you feel uh, the court or the department or anyone needs to know? Um, just the same since he's been since William has been with us, he's made tremendous progress um, with his speech. He loves school. Um, his doctor definitely recommends that routine strict stay on his routine because if not, it, it just gets a little chaotic. But he's done very, very well with us. Thank you. All right. So the final hearing is October 26, 2023 at nine o'clock. Our dismissal date is November 6th.